So the Oscars happened. That's big. And, uh, I feel obligated to share my thoughts about all the wins and snubs and everything. First of all, let's talk acting. Melissa Leo, I thought, yeah, she deserved to win. She did a really great job. But after seeing True Grit, I really thought I really came to admire Haley Steinfeld and her performance in that movie. Because I thought she had a lot, a lot of lines. She pretty much carried the movie. She had to memorize everything. And she did not talk like a normal 14-year-old girl. So, I think that she might have deserved... If, if it were possible, I'd probably give an award to each of them if I ran the Oscars. But, he Seinfeld did a really great job in that movie, and she deserved, she deserved the nomination. Christian Bale, no surprise there. He, uh, he earned his nomination. He absolutely earned it. I mean... That's one of the best performances I've ever seen. He was, like, unrecognizable. Now, the Portman have not seen her movie, have no intention on seeing her movie, but I think even I was betting on her, because that's another big shoe in. But the big surprise for me was Best Actor. As you all know, I've been rooting for James Franco to win, but, and, of course, he did not. Cost British guy Colin Firth came out, which is, he got a nomination last year for another movie, and, uh, everyone was saying that last year he was going to win the Oscar, it was going to be his big main performance and everything, and, of course, this year he stole it from James Franco, and it's just, the problem I have with Colin Firth, yes, he, he did a good job in that movie, it was very, I understand it was probably very difficult to pull off his stammer. But, uh, all the other guys in that category, they all had other actors to act off of. James Franco had nothing but a video camera, and he still delivered a, one of the best, the best performances of his career with nothing. And he couldn't even move. He couldn't do anything except talk and just be himself. Or, not be himself, or perform. All he could do was perform. Like... In other movies, like, you have to perform and worry about memorizing your lines and worry about, block, like, hitting your cues and everything. James Franco, he didn't have any cues. He was, he didn't have a whole lot of lines. That's why he deserved the Oscar. Because he, he managed to turn in a great performance with little to nothing. And, uh, the be I think a big uproar was at Inception, it didn't win Best Screenplay. I mean, The King's Speech won for Best Original, and isn't that based off a true story? How is that original? The Fighter is based off a true story. The Social Network is a true story, and that won Best Adapted Screenplay, which it deserved. The King's Speech is something that really happened. In Inception, you have to make up all the rules. You have to make up how the dream sharing technology works. You have to make up the layers. You have to make up the kicks and limbo and how the characters and how they interact and everything. And, of course, you all want me to talk about Best Picture. The King's Speech is a good movie. I agree with that. I've seen the thing. I think it's a very beautiful movie. It has some very great stuff, very great performances. I like Jeffrey Rush. I thought it was a very interestingly paced movie. It had some really great scenes. But I don't think it's best picture material. I think like movies like The Social Network, as I said, The Social Network or Inception or some of the other movies are best picture material. Like, the one movie I don't think desert, I don't think sh I really disagree with its nomination is The Kids Are Alright. I don't think that was Best Picture Awardly, because it was just a typical marriage, suburban marriage dramedy. Nothing more, nothing less. And the acting wasn't that great. I don't think Mark, Mark Ruffalo deserved his nomination. He was just really bland and he didn't get a whole lot done. I like Mark Ruffalo, don't get me wrong. But, as I said, 
I really think it should have been either an inception of the social network. Put a gun to my head and I'm gonna have to go with the social network. Because it's just the king. So the movies like the social network or Inception or 127 hours. They never lost my interest. King's Speech lost my interest at some times, and some of the long talking scenes got a little boring, and all the pauses and all the stammering made the movie difficult. And, and I also have a gripe with Toy Story 3 winning Best Animated Movie, even though I haven't seen it. I still think How to Train Your Dragon deserved it. Because How to Train Your Dragon is one of those rare movies I can't find a single flaw with it. I haven't seen Toy Story 3, so for all I know, it's like one of the most genius movies I've ever ever. I don't know if I'm going to see it or not. I really don't. A friend of mine has it, so I could borrow it at any time. But, uh... I think that's pretty much it. Hmm. The ceremony itself, I thought, was not as eventful. I liked the Inception parody at the beginning, but... It kind of went downhill from there. And I saw far too much of James Franco that I needed to see. Especially in the brown duck thing. And I like James Franco, don't get me wrong, but... it's just It wasn't the most eventful Oscars. It didn't have any big punchlines or anything. Like, of that year, they did a big musical number with Hugh Jackman and Anne Hathaway. Or when uh, John Stewart was like playing the Wii on the, on the stage, that was hilarious. But I think two, overall, two thousand ten was a great year for big movies, especially all the best picture nominees. So great. I think two thousand ten is going to be great. We've got like Transformers three, Battle L A, Take Me Home Tonight, which I'm seeing on Friday. And I guess we'll see what that year brings us. Transformers seven is out.